now. Hey Best Pally, I'm Allie, and wouldn't it be cool to see if you were burning fat throughout the day so you could know what helps or stops you from burning fat? This is how I used to check if I'm in ketosis to see if I'm in fat burning mode, making myself bleed. You use these test strips and this device, they're lancets and you gotta sterilize, it's unsanitary. Now I feed my little machine, his name is Seymour. What do you point to? And it's telling me just this one moment, right now, am I in ketosis burning fat instead of carbs? And the answer is no. But I'm on my way, so I'm gonna wanna test in the future and do this all again. And I have to do it in a bathroom, and each one of these test strips costs me a dollar every time I do it. And it costs me a hassle, and it costs me a hole in my finger. But screw all that, because starting today, I'm going to be able to see my ketone level all the time at any given moment. Ooh. This is a continuous ketone monitor. You wear it technically under your flesh. We'll get to that. And it shows you your ketones on a graph. So now that I have this information, I can do a ton of experiments for you to see what causes my fat burning, what takes away from it, just what my metabolism is doing at any given moment. You may have seen I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor for years now, and it's been really cool to see my blood sugar in real time to optimize and experiment with my body, but it's only a part of the puzzle. And this whole time I'm thinking, man, it'll be pretty cool if we could maybe see ketones in the future. Just kidding, the future is now. I'll tell you more about the difference between glucose and ketones and why it's gonna be so cool to see them both. But first, let's get this thing on me, in me. Time to live my life with a second sensor, just rapidly turning into a cyborg for your edutainment. Yes, I do need to put a filament into my arm. But I'm here to show you that it will be quick and easy, unless it's not, let's find out. Let's sight on the back of your upper arm. Oh, yes, I have one choice. Use an alcohol wipe to remove any oily residue and allow your skin to dry before applying the sensor. So I know some inside info on this because I helped Levels out with their sensor application video. And if you don't, some alcohol kind of gets in the spot where the sensor goes in and so it could sting a little. That's why you wait. Peeling off the lid on the sensor pack cap off of the sensor applicator. Okay, let's go. And then I press this into there, maybe. Now we can see that the sensor's in there and that needle is gonna go into me. And the sensors I've been using don't let you see the needle, which is a much nicer experience. Not that I need to be nervous, I've done this a bajillion times. Uh, this is the safety clip. Okay. You're an upside down, which way do I go? It, it, sideways? You see my tan from having a levels patch here? You know, I'm just stalling. <laughs> Remember, I'm not nervous. That looks good, and go for it. Nothing, like not even air. It's on. Hey, we did it! Yeah, that felt like precisely nothing, and it is slightly smaller than the CGMs I've used. Pair my body with my phone, ha <laughs> ha, the box. Oops. I do it stupid so you don't have to. And then it is warming up. We have 60 minutes till I can play. I'm so pumped to unlock all this hidden data in my body. <laughs> a little technical hiccup. It's saying, not paired with sensor, so I'm pairing it again. It was a very excited hour. There we go. <laughs> we have data. I'm at 0.5 right now. I just finished working out and I'm in ketosis. I am burning fat. Okay, awesome. I thought I'd have to wait another hour for it to get going. So the cutoff for burning fat versus carbs is 0.5. I'm barely into fat burning mode, which honestly, I didn't even think I would be at all right now. Already, this is interesting and I have 14 days of this. Good morning, I woke up at zero ketones and I blame the vegan cookies I had last night. So confirmed, high carbs will kick you out of ketosis. Groundbreaking. Though I guess that could be surprising for people who think that vegan is synonymous with healthy, which is not true. There is vegan junk food and a lot of vegan food that is healthy is still high in carbs. Now today I have to go to a conference, which means unhealthy conference food. No, screw that, I'm gonna do a 24 hour fast. And we'll also see how fast I can go from zero to fat burning. And I really wanted to save the long fast for later in the video to be a climax, but whatever, we're diving in. At this point in the day, I would be feeling and thinking like I hit ketosis, but checking right now, it would be exceptionally inconvenient. So it's so cool, I just opened my phone and no, it's 12.42, I'm watching people eat, and I just hit 0.5, so fully nutritional ketosis, right at the beginning. I used to fast all day, every day, and only eat dinner. So I only recently started eating lunch, and my body is used to fasting. So I think that's why I got into ketosis so quickly. For athletes, it can happen overnight. For some people, it can take days. And now I'm breaking my fast with this low carb dinner. This morning, I woke up just barely in ketosis still. This is so surprising. I thought a low carb meal would have me way deeper in, especially after that long fast. So, oh, this is so cool to be able to see data instead of just based on my feelings that were, I guess, wrong. Also, that long fast had me in ketosis only about 5% of the time. So I'm bopping around 0.5 or below, not staying in it, which is not what I would have thought based on feel, 
So I'm wrong. I am way less fat burning when I'm not eating than I expected. And now I really want to be outrageously in ketosis. So I think I need to convince myself to do a 48 hour fast. Stay tuned. I've not been sitting in ketosis for 10% of my day, but I think it's time to compare this to the blood. Is it right? Ow. Now if the CKM works in the same way that I understand the CGM works, it's not testing my blood. The filament is sitting in my interstitial fluids and using that to test. 0.4. Okay. Close. Although that's right on the edge where I really care. I want to see 0.5 to be fully in nutritional ketosis and this is not. Oh wait, now my CKM is saying 0.3. So this is an interesting finding. It does bounce around a whole lot more than I expected. I thought it would be a more even graph into and out of ketosis. I'm definitely gonna keep doing these blood test comparisons throughout to see if it matches up. Lifting heavy, did nothing. I started at 0.3, ended at 0.3. Although I have a different style of workout that I think is gonna make a huge change on both of these sensors coming up. My last meal before the big test. So the next time I'll have food, will be at this time, not tomorrow, but the following evening. And let the fasting begin. Good morning, I ate a bunch of pasta last night, but my sensor is saying I woke up in ketosis, so let's compare to my blood. Ugh. 0.3. Okay, so not the same, except now this is saying 0.3. I'm functioning in a very small range right now because I'm not in a keto diet. People that go into ketosis and stay in it are at one to three, not 0.1. One. So the fact that I specifically care about a 0.1 difference feels a little unfair to both of these devices. And just for the heck of it, let's see if my glucose monitor is close to this. My blood says I'm at 88. My sensor says I'm at 86, so pretty darn close. There is also a 15 minute delay in the sensor, so your interstitial fluids will be just a bit behind. And I'm not sure how that works with a ketone sensor because this is so freaking new. Like super freaking new. I'm pretty sure I'm the only person on YouTube doing this right now. And I'm glad you're here watching, glad you found me. And if you did because of this video, let me know in the comments. Going on a walk to try and kickstart my fat burning, and this is a perfect time to tell you about this super cool thing called metabolic flexibility. A simplified explanation of this is that your body has two different sources of fuel, either carbs or fat. And carbs is a very small amount, and once you burn through it, then it's got to switch into fat. But it prefers carbs, it'll do that first. And your body will get through a high intensity workout better with carbs, it's faster. Now that switch into fat burning that I mentioned is actually really tough, and most of us aren't doing it. Most of us are just fueled by carbs. Even though it's a small amount, we always keep it capped off because the standard American diet has us eating often and eating carbs. We never burn through it, we never need to do the fat burning. If you know anybody who gets hangry, just turns into an absolute jerk when they don't eat, that's probably because they can't do the switch into fat burning. And I was like that, but I trained my body to be able to do that, so I wasn't dependent on carbs and then mean. And if you've ever heard of the keto flu, where when you're getting into ketosis in the keto diet, you feel like crap, that's because, like I said, that switch is really tough and your body's figuring out how to burn fat as fuel and giving you headaches and bad breath and fatigue. But once you get over it and you're fat burning, that is a large amount of fuel. You have a ton of fat on you. Even lean people have thousands of calories of fat if you can tap into it. And that is great for long distance runners or cyclists, stuff that isn't high intensity but goes for a long time because once you burn through your little bit of carbs, you have all of that fat to use and you don't have to keep eating gels while you're running and try and keep up with your carb stores. Now people on the keto diet try and get into fat burning and stay there. So instead of like the standard American diet where you're fueled only by carbs, they're trying to be fueled only by fat. But if you're fueled by fat long enough, you will even lose the enzymes to digest carbohydrates. So I don't like either of those two, being keto or the standard American diet. I wanna use both sources of fuel when I need them, whether it's a long run or doing an intense short CrossFit workout and being able to switch easily back and forth between the two without the keto flu, without being miserable, your body just knows what to do. That is metabolic flexibility. And that is why I'm so pumped to have both of these sensors at the same time. The glucose monitor, the car side of it, and then the ketone monitor, the fat side of it. And why you just watched me do a bunch of laps to burn through my carb stores so my body goes, hey, I gotta burn fat now. Because you can get better at it. The more you go back and forth between the two fuel sources, the easier it is, the more metabolically flexible you become. Hey, we just got there, 0.5. Now I love fasting. It makes me feel great, it's easy to do, but up and to a point. We are now past the time when I would have had dinner today, and it's really nice working all day, just looking forward to having a big dinner, 
today. I have no dinner to look forward to. That's a little bit of a bummer. It's not that I'm sitting here hungry. It's just that I like that ritual. Although it helps that today I was shooting all day, so I focused on that and not that I wasn't eating. So I try to make it a point to make it a really busy day when I'm doing a 48 hour fast. And when I wake up tomorrow, it's back to normal. I'm not used to eating in the morning anyway. So it's like a complete mental reset. It's just this short window of time between dinner and bed that really I struggle with. Doing another comparison for kicks. 0.7, interesting. This says 0.5 right now. I have yet to hit over 0.5 on my sensor. And based on how I feel right now, I would have guessed that I was deeper in ketosis than just the bare minimum. But also 0.2 is not that much of a difference. Again, much nicer that I didn't have to bleed to get my sensor reading. Good morning, treating myself to black coffee without my usual almond milk. Oh, 1.5, we are well into ketosis. Look at that graph. And now it's saying optimal ketone as opposed to nutritional ketosis begins. And it does give a range all the way up to what looks like four and a half is optimal. But we should compare again out. Three, 3.0, wow, that is Double. That's so much further into ketosis than the, what this is saying. As convenient as this is, I don't know, I, I trust the blood more. Interesting. Also, wow, that's a record for me. It had to have been all the laps that we did together. <laughs> Pallies, you are so lucky. We have a ketone expert in this video now. I'm Michael Brandt. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called HBMN. We make a pure ketone drink. So you can get there by fasting or by eating low carb. There's a lot of ways to get your body to make its own ketones. We figured out a way to make a pure shot of ketones. Explain what a ketone is. Right, so ketone is something that your body can use for energy. If you remember high school biology, the mitochondria is the power plant of the cell. It turns metabolites, different fuel sources into ATP. ATP is energy currency in your cell. So you can do all sorts of metabolism with different building blocks, right? Sugar turns into ATP, right. fat turns into ATP, ketones turn into ATP. And so ketones are one of the many things that our bodies can use for energy. Your body makes a lot of ketones whenever your blood sugar is low. If you're fasting or starving, you may be right now. I'm starving. Your brain can't use fat, it can use glucose, it can use ketones. So when you're low on glucose, your body has to make ketones or otherwise your brain wouldn't work. Did you know you could have 100 times more calories stored as fat than carbohydrates? You can store like a day or two of carbohydrates and you can store a month of oh, energy wow. for, of fat. But most people are just keeping that carbohydrate stores full up and never really tapping into the fat stores. That's right, you know, there was no peanut butter cups on the savanna, so. <laughs> Ancient humans were constantly running lower on blood glucose and your body was making ketones right. to fuel your energy demands. Modern humans, as soon as our blood glucose dips a little bit, we get hangry, we go snack, we go get our blood glucose back up. It's not great for you to have constantly high blood glucose, diabetes, other issues when your blood glucose is high all of the time. So I have a question for you, expert. I am wearing a continuous ketone monitor, but I just tested my blood. It's very different from what the sensor is saying. I got a three ketones on blood and a 1.5 on my sensor. Interesting. I think the blood prick is probably gonna be more correct. You're getting a larger sample, so the one that's in your arm is getting like a tiny bit of, maybe it's not even blood. I think it's, it's interstitial fluid. Yeah, versus a finger prick. So blood is better, and then you're getting more volume of liquid as well. Plus the fact that it's just been around longer, like the device in your arm is super new. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. So if you really want to like zoom out and get the big picture, they're both giving you the big picture of like, hey, am I, are my ketones up or not? And it is really cool to see it on a graph. It's like ramped up from, you know, last night to this morning when I didn't have anything all day yesterday. That's what's really cool about these continuous biomarker measuring devices. It's like, you know, if you imagine you're driving a car for an hour and you only get to see your speed once. In minute 37, yeah, it sure. tells you how fast you're going. It's like, it's a lot better to be able to see often. <sighs> Next test. I've heard people on the keto diet are afraid to do high intensity workouts because it might kick them out of ketosis. Is that true? Is that gonna happen? The only way to find out is to do a high intensity exercise. And to do it when I'm in ketosis and I'm not on the keto diet, so I gotta do it while I'm on hour 43 of a fast. Let's go. All right, consent by Tabatas, let's freaking go. Oh, nervous. Three, two, one, go. Go as hard as you can for 20 seconds. Then you get a 10 second breather, which goes by very quickly. And then you gotta do that again. You know, when I was talking about the carbohydrate fuel and fat fuel on my walk, there could be some carbohydrates probably still in me. There's still glycogen in my muscles, and that's the carbohydrate fuel. And when my body senses what I'm doing to it, go. It's gonna say, 
Are we running from the line? And then dump that fuel into my blood. So if I do this correctly, we'll see a spike on my glucose monitor, but I have no idea what it's gonna do to my ketone sensor. And by correctly, I mean going really super hard. A very important eye in hit intensity. Okay. Oh, that's stupid. That's so stupid. Oh, my everything hurts. I'm gonna take a minute break and then do two more of that whole set that you just saw. I'll check back in with you later. Freaking rough. I feel like jello. <coughs> Whoa, remarkable results. One, I was able to generate the energy to do that. Holy crap. I did feel a little more woobly than I would have being fueled by carbs. But two, it was intense enough to get a glucose spike. I started at 80 and whew, just shot up. And it went all the way up to 127, which I am quite proud of because I was worried that I wouldn't push myself hard enough to do that. I did in fact convince my body that I was running from a lion and it needed to dump that in my blood to fuel me to get away. Now look at what my ketones did over the past hour or so. Just did a nosedive. So I started burning up that fat energy, the ketones too. So my body also used up the ketones that were circulating in my blood. And as my ketones were falling, I did do another blood test to compare at 0.6. Whoa, 0. 0.6. And I still haven't eaten yet, so my body has started making ketones again, and I'm now at 0. 0.7. My graph is coming upward. It's so interesting to see my body respond in real time on a graph from, from both of these. And here we are, two days later, precisely. I do still feel good and energized, but I will say that I am very much looking forward to eating. We're saying goodbye to my ketones because I have a one more experiment left. Now, what does drinking Ketone IQ do to your ketones? Let's find out. This is actually 10 servings. You only need a little bit. This is straight ketones, what's in my body because my body's making them. And before Michael and his team developed these, you could only get ketones by making them and now you can just drink them. How freaking crazy. Also, it tastes pretty freaking crazy. You've had these before. Well, you're lucky Michael's not here when you're saying that. It tastes interesting, I'll say that. And most people mix it with stuff. You use seltzer, some lemon. I'm drinking it straight because I'm an insane person. Christina's dramatic, it's not that bad. Oh my god, it tastes like you licked a rubber tire. So this makes a fast easier. And the reason I didn't have it before my fast is because I wanted to keep the stimulus separate. If there are too many variables, you don't know what's moving my ketones up. So I had to science hard for you on this one. My ketones are back down to base. Baseline. Let's see what my graph does. Ow. Sensor now says 0.7 and blood test says 1.8. Whoa! That's way further into ketosis than I got with a 24 hour fast. And I am not fasted right now, I just drank a thing. We have made it to the full 14 days. My sensor has expired, the app is letting me know, and I figured you'd want to see how this went. Nope. That was super easy. And what do we see? Not really wound looking, maybe a little bit of a tan line. And that is the little filament that was in my arm. See, it's flexible. Doing all the sensing for two weeks. The past 14 days have been interesting. I am absolutely pro continuous monitoring in case you didn't pick up on that. It's so cool to see on the graph that bump when I fasted for 48 hours. I want all of my biomarkers on a graph. How cool would it be to have continuous cortisol monitoring or my inflammation on a graph to see when it goes up and down instead of what they call just a snapshot in time where I stab myself and see that moment or get blood drawn. Now we did see that there was a pretty big discrepancy between the stabbing myself and the sensor, but this is a very new technology and I am confident that they're gonna get way closer. The company is called Civio or CBio. I that's what it looks like. They developed this technology and I'm sure are continually working on it. They have an Indiegogo out right now. I'll link to it in the description. It's already over 800% funded. So I'm glad to know that there are other cyborg sensor loving people out there that are also into this. And if you liked that, you'll like seeing what Ketone IQ does to my blood sugar. I'll put that test down there for you. Hey Beth Pally, I'm Allie, and I read that drinking this could stop your blood sugar from spiking as high when you eat, meaning this could help your metabolism handle stuff better. Awesome! This is especially awesome because high blood sugar spikes are really bad. They cause inflammation, 